Before I start my presentation today, I would like to do a little survey. How many of you here today have、uh, used or still using deployment for release? Please show me your hands. So, how many of you haven't tried deployment anymore? So, we still have people who haven't put up their hands in the two rounds of a survey. And、uh, I will be very、uh, quick in the first first part, and、uh, I will save more time for the demo. The Kubernetes、um, deployment is、uh, the replication controller, and、uh, there are two important tasks completed. That is、uh, the replication. And、uh, the rolling update—that's two important tasks. Since then, Kubernetes are solving the problem of availability and、uh, the consistency. When we move to deployment, the deployment and the repl rep replica set has a structure of、uh, two layers. So we have、uh, the capability of、uh, version control. So we can do the rolling back after the release. We can return back to the historical vision. So that is the current status of deployment. So.、Uh, When we evaluate the deployment for the cloud native release, what are the challenges? The first challenge is the deployment strategy. As the R and D team, I think you have one thing in common. We have the application. It doesn't mean our application is available, especially during the deployment process. If we want to check whether it is available, what we do first, we will check whether there's abnormality from a more Monitoring. We will refer back to the main、uh, link whether the major features are normal, and thirdly, whether the changes are effective. After we do this、um, confirmation or verification, we can make sure the service is available. When we use the deployment for rolling update, we didn't have the time for verification. And there's a pass mechanism in deployment, but when we really run the pass,、uh, it's、uh, highly possible the rolling update is、uh, continued. So we cannot have accurate process control during the deployment process. And the second challenge is、uh, the pod scheduling strategy. We find that under one deployment, the pod scheduling、uh, strategy is exactly the same. What is the problem? We can have a look at this scenario. Imagine we have a cluster.、Uh, the cluster are distributed in two、um, data centers, and、uh, I want to release four pods. And the scheduling strategy is exactly the same. So it's possible that my four pods will be scheduled to only one server. And、uh, usually it's okay, and、uh, it will all be routed to the same server. But in case of、uh, disaster, for example, there is a road construction outside of um, um, the、uh, server, and、uh, I don't have a power supply. Then I don't have this、uh, server still on, and with the、uh, Kubernetes、uh, operation mechanism it will be shifted to other server, but the backup time is out of our control. That is、uh, why we say if you want to have a high availability, we need to have、um, these、uh, backup in one city or in multiple cities. And if there is a disaster happening to our machine room or the computer room,、uh, we might not have enough resources. So whether my application can be recovered in another center, that is a very big question mark. So these、uh, consistent or the same scheduling strategy do not allow we、um, us to have、uh, the tolerance of、uh, disasters or the catastrophe to tolerance. And the third challenge is、uh, the IP address. Restrictions. We have some users. They have a very complete maintenance and operation system, but it is based on the VM、uh, deployment.、Uh, on the VM, what are the features for the deployment? The physical resources, the ECS, my IP, will not change with the iteration of application. The 
application process kill and start again and again, but my VM, my IP maintain the same. So in the classical uh, scenario, we take IP as uh, the standards, and uh, it is uh, widely adopted. The monitoring, the link analysis, the gateway, and uh, the security whitelist strategy all have uh, taken IP as a uh, the uh, standard, if it is rela uh, re relocated from VM to container model, um, the IP address is uh, still maintained the same. And in the process, we find that we cannot take a deployment to satisfy the needs of our customers. So we have uh, developed our own CR and we call it the cafe de deployment. Our cafe deployment supports the in-place upgrade. In most of the release scenarios, we can make sure the pod and the pod is a stable, IP is the same, and we have considered the high availability in the financial scenarios and a and suppose active active replication or multi active uh, replication and uh, our pod has uh, the sh uh, graceful shutdown feature the official kubernetes uh, also has uh, the capability of a graceful shutdown but if the concurrency accumulates to a certain amount the um, pod cannot achieve a fully graceful shutdown and the uh, cafe deployment supports a safe and uh, flexible deployment strategy and there's a base um, or the rolling update in batches so that they can have accurate control of the deployment process and they have enough time for verification. So these are the three features of a CAFE deployment. Next is the structure of a CAFE deployment. And uh, uh, it is the same as a Kubernetes uh, deployment. It has uh, three layers. The middle layer is uh, in-place set. In-place set is uh, something which uh, it is uh, a replica set which supports in-place upgrade and uh, it maintains um, the number of uh, ports and uh, cafe deployment will not have a direct uh, interaction with the port and we have an in-place set it is uh, mainly for the in-place upgrade I have uh, listed uh, the in-place upgrade configuration we can support if the changes happen in these areas we can maintain stable port and IP and the cafe deployment naturally support active active replication or multi active replication and in the spec we have a clear definition of the topology of the application on the left side you can see the output and uh, the cluster has uh, covered uh, two data centers. In each data center, I have uh, the node. When the node is uh, created, it will labeled with the data center, and uh, this label helps during the uh, calling of uh, the um, node that it can satisfy the certain requirements. And uh, in this, uh, according to the topology in this. Uh, in the spec, it will uh, create the unique in-play set, and the in-play set is unique to the data center, and the in-play set is responsible for the maintenance of the life cycle of the port. Cafe deployment takes the gold view, and it decides in each data center how, uh, how many replicas I need. And the cafe deployment has uh, the in-place upgrade and uh, the fault tolerance or disaster tolerance feature. Next, I want to introduce uh, Hao Tian to share with you the um, deployment strategy of a cafe. Thank you. Next, I would like to present the features of a cafe deployment. Number one is uh, the deployment strategy. I will give you a simple example. There is a cafe deployment, and there are two uh, data centers connected, and we have uh, in-place at A and uh, in-place at B. And uh, the left uh, bottom 
is a part of uh, the specs of uh, CAFE deployment, and uh, we have uh, 10 replicas. By default, it, they are di divided uh, equally to the uh, two data centers, and uh, in place set A has uh, five pods, and in place set B also have uh, five pods, and we also have uh, the beta up, uh, upgrade type. And uh, the 10 parts will be divided uh, to three groups. The first is a beta group, and uh, the other two groups are the standard batches. And uh, the beta group, let me explain. We take one random part from each data center for a new version. If the customer say no problem, then we can move to the standard re uh, deployment. And the um, client need to click and confirm. When we first have a cafe deployment, uh, the pod grows from zero. If uh, the deployment has uh, 100 uh, replicas, and uh, if we create directly these uh, 100 parts and uh, one part has some problem with the image and then it will cause waste of uh, resources because your deployment fails and uh, the creation of the parts is uh, by batch. We will first create the parts in the beta group and uh, one in each data center. And uh, if the customer confirms uh, no problem, then we will have the following batches. And uh, each batch, we have uh, four pods, two in each data center, and uh, uh, one in place set will have uh, two pods. And then customer confirm. And then the last batch of uh, four pods will be created in total 10 pods. During the upgrade of a part, we will follow the same deployment strategy. First is a beta group, the customer confirms no problem, and we move to the um, batch upgrade, and uh, every batch is a full pause, and uh, confirm again, and then we have uh, the second batch. During the deployment process, CAFE uh, deployment controller will not uh, directly apply on the pod. The pod creation and upgrade is uh, um, done by the in-place set controller, and uh, the CAFE deployment controller is only to abstract the strategy. During the deployment process, if the pod version has some problem, uh, the customer can abort and uh, undo the upgrade. During the deployment process, we might find that uh, in place at A do not have enough resources, and then maybe one port cannot be created. So we have uh, the um, rescheduling mechanism, and uh, it will be automatically rescheduled to uh, the other in place set. Some customers can close this uh, configuration if they don't need it. If the customer want to have uh, four pods in one data center and all the others uh, will be deployed in other in place set, then you can have these uh, specified. For example, DCA four pods and the DCB 60% of the pods. <laughs> And the cafe deployment is not directly working on the path. There is an interface, port set control interface. And uh, it uses this interface to work on the bottom workload, like uh, the um, um, replica, etc. In place set. And um, has a uh, realized uh, the grouping and uh, high availability uh, scheduling across different data centers. Some customers already use or plan to use um, like a regular set, a replica set, or stateful set, etc. And they um, 
the scheduling or the uh, scheduling between different groups or different centers cannot be realized, and uh, they can also use the interface, and uh, the native workload can be reinforced, and uh, we didn't change the code of uh, the controllers, so the replay set or uh, stateful set can be maintained at the previous status. So the customers can maintain the previous, and it will not have any attack, any invasion to the original code. And we have connected to the replica set, and we will also connect to Steva set. And this is after connecting to the replica set. And uh, it is the same as in place set. In different center, we will have uh, the uh, replica set. It is uh, to make sure the version of the pod. When we do the deployment, uh, we will create new replica set. And the new replica set will maintain the port of the new version. And the cafe deployment strategy or logic can also be used the, on the replica set. And uh, we will create this part, and the uh, customer confirms. And then we will uh, move to the second batch for pause. And uh, the customer confirm again. And the last batch of a pause will be created. So when we use in place set for deployment, we might encounter the challenges. For example, the shutdown is not graceful, and uh, there might be failure of a request because uh, IP shutdown is uh, the reverse ex uh, inverse incident trigger, and uh, the part is not ready, and then it will inform, and. Uh, it will shut down the IP from the list, and it will have impact on the IP label, and then it will shut down the routing. If the customers uh, can have uh, the right to uh, the signals, it can realize uh, the graceful shutdown, but it is not guaranteed to have the graceful shutdown every time. So the um, implicit controller layer is uh, selected for the graceful shutdown. We have uh, the routing principle shutdown first, and then we reach to the part for the graceful shutdown, and uh, we use uh, the um, replicate scaler. Uh, re Redness gate. We can change the uh, state of uh, readiness gate to uh, indicate whether the pod is ready or not. When we upgrade the pod in advance, we will uh, set readiness gate as a force, so the gate is uh, not ready in advance, and the pod controller will realize uh, um, this uh, state, and it will remove uh, the IP to the not ready list. And uh, the other routers, like uh, Kubrosi, will watch that it's not ready, and it will also move it, remove it from the list. If we use a cluster AP to exposure this part, uh, in place set controller cannot uh, realize whether this traffic or this router is offline. And uh, we here have uh, wait three seconds logic. We wait for three seconds. And uh, we assume that it will process uh, the request uh, or the traffic in three seconds, and then we will start uh, the upgrade. If the upgrade is uh, successful, we will set the readiness gate to true, and uh, then the router information will be generated. Of course, three seconds cannot be a full guarantee for all the traffic from the pod is processed. For a true graceful shutdown, you need the involvement of a load balancer. We have an SOB controller who will work together with the mechanism. And when the pod will be on the load balancer SLB, they will have a finalizer on the pod used to guarantee the pod will not be revised or changed easily. When we truly upgrade the pod, we will take the readiness gate as false, and then the routing rule will be 
recognized and there will be a true shutdown. Once you have that and there is no traffic, they will go back to remove the finalizer and then the controller would know that it is a true remove of the traffic. So there will now be the waiting of three seconds. And that is how you can guarantee it will be truly synchronized for the upgrading. Now I would like to show you the demo. I will mainly cover by control by creating a control component by a implicit as a workload and let me show you how did we create the pop in batches, upgrade and rollback. And if there's uh, more time, I would like to also show you how can we change it to the Revit set as the bottom workload. Okay. It seems that it is not so easy to operate because my laptop does not show me the full screen of this uh, code. So allow me to frequently turn back and now I'm going to create an environment that is clean with no cafe deployment created. Current Cafe deployment configuration, we would give him readiness, and on the top, the strategy backset four that will be each batch used before port upgrade the type with beta. After you do that, we will have a time to wait and confirm. And over here, the bottom right, I will be watch how the pod was created. Okay, you can see I just had a new pod, and then on this part, you can see already two pods has been provisioned. And for this window, I will be keep watching the state of cafe de deployment. And over here, you can see progress. It is that it's waiting for confirmation. That means the config deployment is already ready, waiting for confirmation. There are two pods. And I'm here for confirm for the current beta inver uh, version or beta release of the cafe deployment. Now we pro 
provide such a plan that in Enochilis we will have a mark. If you say it is false, that means it is not confirmed. If the user found it is okay, I think the true better part is okay, and I can change that to true. At the time, on the right hand side, you can see we started to relieve the first batch, which is four pots. On the upper right, you can see the current progress. It is again waiting for confirmation because we have finished the first round of release. And over here, I can confirm again. And you can see this is the last one we need. Pod number 7 to 10. On the upper right, you can say the progress is uh, executing and now it is completed. We have all the 10 pods and are all ready. And the progress is completed. And on the left hand side, you can see all the pods. And for the pod, we have a notification to guarantee they will be deployed in two different rooms. Upon the node, we will give them level at the notice letters foundation. And here you can see we have had all the notability of the nodes. Five of them have been signed to CIA, means Ruth A. The others are for room B. And here I'd like to show you how we upgrade. And the port actually has a variable of environment. I can change this variable from v1 to v2. Let me show you how we upgrade. And over here, it's all the port you can see. They have the fixed IP. You can see the port uh, already in the progress of upgrading. The current state is still waiting for confirmation. And then we can show all the variables of all ports. Over here you can see, because there is a beta release, the uh, first batch will be 2 port, and you can see it's already V2, and still waiting for confirmation, we can confirm this grouping for beta release. You can see the first four port. You can see the port IPs are always fixed because on the bottom layer is infraset, so it is what we call in place upgrading. And over
example, here you can see our D6 port. Let us uh, change this status to V2, so we're the version 2. And now you can see if I got any problem, I want to go back, I want to give up on the current release. same way you can see you can change the same thing change the notation I gave it a, a bot so the controller would know that I want to abort and on the right hand side you can see it is in the aborted status and the bolts are currently rolling back to 10 and that's finished and now you can see all the six ports we just uh, upgraded to v2 had rolled back to v1 v1 and over here, because of time limits, for the following changing to replicate workload, I don't think I got time for that. And but I would like to welcome your questions. Any questions? It seems that the function is a little bit similar to cluster formulation with uh, the deployment in multi-clusters. Other than controlling its upgrade versions, have you considered... You now, I don't know when you're deploying for different KPI clusters or you have different rooms in the big KPI cluster. Well, right now we have one cluster that will be nodded to cross different rooms or the cells. So in this cross region, they will have the interactions. Sorry, I've got a question about the confirmation. I can understand when you confirm your change from false to true, but after you finish this batch, how can we change from true to false again? Is it done by the confidence point in the control, or you need to in place set to report? Annotation, you change that to false, that is the logic control of the release. So it is actually in the cafe deployment and controlled by the cafe deployment controller. In place said cafe deployment would watch its status and once it changed to waiting and then it will be replaced that to false, right? No, 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 that is not the bottom layer, the up layer it is waiting. They would uh, use the interface. They do not care if the implicit or replicate step set. They would like to see its partition. Replicate is a little bit strange because it's new. For beta release, there will be two ports. And when these two ports are ready, and they will call to the config blink controller. I would also like to say, implicit itself would not judge whether my cell is in whatever vision, they will just report to cafe deployment how many of the pods are ready, how many are not. Then cafe deployment, based on the report of in place that, they will make a decision that is it confirm waiting or executing or whatever. Another question, if it's a, a play cafe deployment, will that configuration also change from bottom to in place it. It's just like for deployment, you have the update deployment and they will upgrade directly set, right? Yes, yes. Okay, it is already time. We cannot have QA. But uh, if you are interested, you're welcome to come to us offline. I will remain here. And uh, one last thing.
Is it okay for me to take a picture with you? So it's a, a good uh, gift for us. It's a selfie for all of us. One, two, three. Thank you.